Hello, hello, internet world. This is Norma Jo. This is a hot, sticky-ass day. I literally have not even taken a shower yet, because I was like, why should I shower and get all clean, put on makeup afterwards, only to have to wash it off again, you know? So, I'm sitting here with all my grime, and, um... Uh, yeah, a bunch of makeup on and stuff like that. But anyways, it's not what I want to talk about. I wanted to make a very special video all about pet speak. Okay, so I have pets like this one here. <laughs> and like, okay, I'm really interested in pet speak because even people who like, like some people, you're just like, okay, you would use pet speak because they're just loud and goofy and silly and all this shit and or they or they you know the, some people you just like you would use pet speak but some people even people who you don't expect you can catch them using it and i have a theory i feel like it is like human compulsion to where if you're not actively thinking about it if you are not like, obviously, if you're thinking about it, if some if people are all around you, they're like, say it, say it, you can obviously control yourself and not do what they want. But if you're not thinking about it, if you're just caught off guard and there's nothing to lose, I think most of the time, most people will just automatically hop into pet speak when they see something like an animal or a baby or anything like that and I think it's more like a compulsion like people I don't think people really think about it I think they more just like it happens you know what I mean um and even people who are totally straight laced all the time you can still catch them doing it so like I don't know I just think it's interesting like on the internet I try to look up something like that so I try to look it up to see if somebody had you know, um, already, like, discussed that or researched something like that, you know. But I couldn't find it. And, and, in fact, the internet's definition of pet speak, or, first of all, okay, first of all, the internet separates pet speak and kid speak. Kid speak or baby speak, whatever, like, uh, they define it as, it's more specific on the internet. They say, basically, it's like the way people talk to little kids when they're trying to teach them how to speak. So it'll be like, I would never talk like this. I talk to ba even my two-year-old nieces. I talk to them more or less like adults, but just like the content I, of what I say is like little kid, you know, to where it'll just be things within their world, you know. But I don't change my tone or anything like that when I'm talking to them, you know what I mean? Like, um, but anyways, <clears throat> the internet defines baby talk as being like, um, if you're, if you got like a book open or something and you're just like, pig, pig, this is pig, you know, like stuff like that. Like it's more like a teaching thing, but then, um, but the thing I'm talking about is it has nothing to do with trying to teach anybody to do anything. It's just an automatic compulsion that's just like, you see something cute that you like, you're not thinking about, um, you're not thinking about anything. You just see, like, oh, hey, kitty, hey, kitty, you know, like, stuff like that, you know? Uh, he went, <laughs> he went and moved over there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, we're like, and also, the internet, when they define it, they are way more strict with their definition. Like, they define it as being, like, um, basically, they define it as being, like, the most annoying version of pet and baby speak, where it's, like, they're, like, oh, you, um, you have to, like, lengthen all your vowels and, like, have, like, drastic tonal changes and, like, um... You know, just think of, like, the really annoying version, like, I don't want to do it, but it's just like, <laughs> like, all that goofy shit, you know? But it doesn't always have to be that extreme, you know what I mean? It doesn't always have to be like that. Like, my dad does it, okay? When he sees a kid 
or an animal that he thinks is cute or whatever. He he doesn't do all that fucking gymnastics, you know? He just kind of goes like, ooh, how are you? You know, like he just kind of, I think it's more just like, okay, I think it can take many forms, but I think most people, they tend to make their voice like, like they tend to bring the sound to the front, front, up, uh, to the upper front of their mouth or whatever. <laughs> like I think it tends to be like an upper frontal shift or whatever, if you want to get all linguistic about it. Or something like that, because it's like, basically it's like, it's very physiological, I feel like. It's like when you see something um, that you like in that cute way, you know, and you, um, and, um, and you get excited over it, you know, I feel like your body tends to like, you know, when you get excited and your body tends to tense and then you're vocal track gets narrower and your mouth narrows to where you're like Ew! you know like that so it's like upper fronting and you're like making the air go like that I think something like, it's been a while since I was in college but um yeah but then also that's not the only thing like think of like a stereotypical like old man or something who is like it's more like hello hello you know like that like, it's more like, it doesn't have to always be high. I think it's more just, like, people making their voice soft. And, like, uh, I don't know. Like I said, it can take many forms. Like, some people, their voice gets high. Some people get soft. Some people get more excited. Some people get, just get more, like, gentle, you know? But, yeah, and then the words people say, too. Like, that's part of it, too. Like, um, the internet addresses that, too. They're, like... It tends to be like, like when you're using that voice, you don't talk normally, but just have that tone. Like, it's like, there tends to be like, um, like certain like patterns of things people say. Like people do a lot of repetition, you know what I mean? Um, because the implication is that the baby or the animal you're talking to can't understand what you're saying. So you're not going to be saying like complicated stuff to them, like, unless you know, I mean, unless you're, like, vent, like, unless you had a bad day and you're, like, talking out your problems to your animal or something, but that's different. Like, I'm talking about when you're just cut having that cuddly voice, you know, and, like, um, um, yeah, it just tends to be a lot of repetition. I do, it too. Like, when I'm talking to my cats, I'm just, like, you're a funny kitty, you're a funny kitty, you know, stuff like that. Like, uh, it's more just, like, the same shit over and over, and it's, just, like, very simple, you know? And, um, uh, or, like, I remember one time when I was, like, working for the rabbit rescue, uh, uh, group, this lady came up, and she was, like, petting the rabbit, and she was just, like, you're just a little beast, aren't you? You're just a little beast. There's a lot of, like, you are, like, things. Because I think it's, like, a form of, like, appreciation, you know? And it's, like, yeah, the funny thing is that, like, I think people tend to think, like, oh, yeah, I'm using simple language because the, this creature or baby can't understand more complex language. But it's, like, a baby that hasn't started to talk yet, or an animal, especially an animal, doesn't understand anything you say. Even if it's simple, it's all about just, like, the tone and even, I don't, I mean, even more than your tone, your tone is, of your voice is probably the last thing they care about. What is this? Yeah, I don't know if I said that. I am expecting a call, but that's from San Francisco. I don't need that one. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, they're not going to understand any of your words. So it's like, I think it's more just about like, and people are like, oh, if you use like a gentle tone of voice, like, uh, you know, they like it more. But it's like, yeah, I mean, as long as you're not like yelling at them, you know, or, or showing anger, you know, you don't have to be like, oh, my baby. Like, you could easily just be like, hey, what's going on today? You know, and stuff like that. But I just think it's more like human compulsion to just kind of do that baby voice, you know, and like, it's really interesting to me because, yeah, I've seen people do it who they never do anything cutesy. They never do anything like, like some people, it's like, you see it all the time. They're just like, oh my god, I saw this dress that I really liked, or like, uh, let me think of one that's not so stereotypically feminine. Um, 
like, oh my god, you guys, I went to the bar and I, you know, uh, something, something, I don't know, it's hard to do it, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to do a, a, a more, like, manly one, because, oh, I don't want to get into, like, gender politics or anything, but I think most Americans will agree that the stereotypes under which we are oppressed or whatever says that men are supposed, or men, masculine, this includes, like, butch women and stuff, too, so, uh, you know, that group, um, is supposed to be more like, uh, not having emotions, I guess, not getting excited or whatever, is supposed to be kind of, like, uh, down-to-earth, bland at all times, unless they're getting pissed off, of course, that's the one exception, you're allowed to be angry, but you're not allowed to do anything else, and then over here, the feminine camp, including very flamboyant men and shit like that, uh, they're allowed to be, like, it's kind of like that quote from fucking, um, The Godfather, which I do not remember this quote, but there's shirts that have this quote on it, so that's why I know it, where he's like, <clears throat> um, he's like, women and children are allowed to be silly, but men aren't, or something, it's, he says it in a more poetic way, but, um, but, um, like, yeah, it's, that's kind of, quote is kind of interesting to me. I really, because I really like The Godfather, and it's like, of course, obviously, there's, like, a, a lot of sexism to it, and, like, that's the first thing most people, especially young people, will probably just see is that, like, oh, he's just being sexist, you know, like, that's it. It's like, yeah, you know, he's an old man, like, from the 20s or whenever the movie is set. <clears throat> but, um, um, but I don't think that's all there is to it. I think there's deeper things to it. I think he's... Like, the way I see it, it's kind of almost like he's almost, like, wishing that he could have the freedom that women and children have in his society to fuck up, basically. Like, it is sexist, um, but at the same time, I don't know, I just feel like there's more to it, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, in my society, like, the men have to be perfect, they have to do everything because we are, like, the rock of the society and, you know, and, um uh, women, because we expect less of them, uh, they're allowed to just kind of be free and just, like, I mean, obviously they have to worry about getting their ass whooped, which they do, but, um, in this quote, at least, he's just saying, like, yeah, women and children, they're allowed to, like, kind of just be more natural and, uh, fuck up, and they're allowed to have a more natural existence and more forgiving, you know? Whereas men, especially him, because he's, like, the boss, you know, he has even more pressure on him, you know, as they go up the ranks and stuff, and he's just like, ugh, I, I wish I didn't have to be so, I wish I didn't have all this pressure on me, you know. But that's the way I take it. I don't know if that's really how he meant it, you know. I have to see, I haven't seen The Godfather in so long, and I really like Al Pacino, so I should watch it again. But my favorite character is Sonny. Ugh, Sonny. A good man. A good man. Anyways, um, what was I fucking talking about before I got into that shit? Oh yeah, so, even people who are over here in this stereotypically masculine realm or whatever of our sexist society, blah blah blah, and all this primer, um, I've seen even people like them, like for example my dad, or other people like him, like, uh, um, when they're in an environment when it's like, nobody's gonna make fun of them for doing this shit. Nobody's gonna be like, ooh, you know, and they're just free to do what they want. They can, they can do these, like, baby voices and stuff for, like, yeah, kids, animals, anything like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, a lot of people have, like, certain set phrases. That, like, my dad, when he talks to the dog, he usually says, like, look at you, and stuff like that, I think. And, um... Also, this one time when, um, I was, like, I was on this group trip with my, uh, co-workers, man, I had the best fucking, ugh. If you can ever find a job where you go on group camping trips with your group, with your co-worker, with your work group, take that fucking job, because they value your ass. Um, I wish they did at my job now, but I'm back to retail, so what can you really want? Um... Uh, where was I? Right, we went camping, and at the campsite, there was a farm that was attached to it. And one time, I was walking on the path, and I saw one of my co- Stop that. Hey. Hey, stop that shit. 
Look at you. My cats. Anyways, um, I was walking on the path and then I saw one of my coworkers and he was reaching over the fence and there was a ram and he was like petting the ram and uh, he was just like talking to it really quietly and he was like, oh, you're a good sheep and something, something. I can't, I didn't hear everything he said because obviously it was quiet, it was soft, but it was just really nice because I'm like, I've never seen that guy like that, you know? Like, he was usually, like, kind of intense. But, uh, but at one time, I saw him, like, chilling with a sheep, you know? <laughs> it was pretty cool. And yeah, I don't know. Just like, oh, and then, uh, yeah, I've seen, like, um, guys, like, um, who are not very flamboyant or anything like that. Like, see a dog they like and be like, Oh, look at the little dog, the, the puppy, oh, do 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 And that's another thing, that little, oh, that's so weird. I feel like that's a compulsion. That might be the compulsion that, like, drives the whole thing. Because it's like, um, because I think because you're primed to do that, like, oh, thing, that's kind of what changes your whole voice, and then everything you say is in the tone of that, of the awe, you know? Oh, it's like, I don't know why people do that. Like, it's just kind of, like, possesses you, you know? Like, like I said, obviously, if you're in a group of people and they're like, Say it! Say it! You're not gonna fucking say it. Or, you will, but it's not gonna be the same. Um, but it's when you're not thinking about it. It's when you're just chilling and everything's cool and you have nothing to lose. And you just spontaneously, like, it just happens, you know? And, yeah, I just feel like there's something really physiological about it. And something kind of like baked in to the human cookie, you know? Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting to me. I'm sure this video is just me talking around and around about the same sh bullshit. But um, yeah, it's very fascinating to me because I'm just like, why do humans do that? Or does there even have to be a reason? I don't think there has to be a reason. It's just kind of something that happens, you know? Like, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs>